In this little video, we're going to look at how some data, a lot of data in, in real life situations, ends up looking like a normal distribution when we graph it. So let me just show you a little online experiment here. Um, so we're going to simulate rolling two dice, or the, the dice here. So there's two dice. Um, so here, this is simulating rolling the three and rolling the five and getting a sum of eight. And so what this thing, let's just roll this dice once. Okay, so we rolled it. One dice came up as a two, the other one came up as a five. Added together, that's a seven. So every time it rolls the dice, dice, it's going to put a little tick mark here on our, our histogram. And so the sum is either obviously going to be a two if we got a one and a one, up to as big as a 12 if we rolled two sixes. So let's roll the dice again. This time we got an eight. So we'll put a little tick by the eight. And this shows us here how many they're going to do. So we're going to roll, roll the dice a whole pile of times here. You can see it's starting to build up around eight. We haven't had any of these yet or any of these yet. Let's roll it ten more times. Okay, and so here's, here's what the results would be. And I'm just going to roll this a whole pile of times. I'm just going to keep clicking on this. You're going to see things build up here. going. Oop. Okay. So interesting, we rolled this 135 times and you can see we didn't get 12 at all. We got two only a few times. It looks like these ones in the middle kind of had the most. Let's do this again. Let's see if we if we roll this the same, if we kind of get the same shape where there's hardly any over here, it gets bigger up here and then gets less over this way. So we'll just keep rolling this a bunch of times. Do we get the same kind of shape? It does look like it's building up in the middle. And then it gets too far here. Um, but yeah, we basically get this shape where we have hardly any on the tail ends here. And we have a whole bunch in the middle. And then it gradually tapers off like that. So if we were to graph this, we would have number of rolls on this side and here we have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And just to give a little sketch of what it might look like. Kind of looks something like this. If you look back at those um, those graphs that it was showing on the roll of the dice. A curve like this. This is what we call a normal distribution or sometimes we call this the bell curve because it looks like a bell if you draw draw a line across the bottom and lots and lots and lots of data when you graph it would end up being normally distributed for instance let's say we wanted to do a sketch of the graph of the heights of grade 11 girls in the school so most students, let's just say the average height in the in the school was 150 centimeters, most people would kind of be right around the mean. So the number of students would be greatest right around the middle part here. There might be some, some really tall uh, girls in the school, a few people who are around 180 centimeters or about six feet, but not very many. And so this would be fairly, fairly few students, number of students would be low at this end, but most people would be gathered around the average, and then there's probably a few students who are, who are fairly short, maybe they're only 120 centimeters tall. So we would get this normal distribution, or we would expect to get that if we were plotting heights, uh, number of students at certain heights in the school. So lots of information Lots of data out there in, in nature would have this sort of a bell-shaped curve, which we call a normal distribution uh, when we sketch, sketch the function, sketch the graph. So let's look at some of the properties of the normal distribution. So I've got a sketch of a normal curve here. That's kind of that bell-shaped curve. And we could figure out that there would be, this would be the number, number of things, whatever it is on this, this axis. And this might be things like height or maybe it's your, the test scores in a class. 
that'd be another thing that would be normally distribution, distributed. There'd be kind of an average mark in the class that most people would kind of get, and there'd be a few people who do really well, and there'd be a few people who wouldn't do very well. And so the tests of scores of students writing a test in a class would probably end up looking like this as well. So right at the peak, of course, would be our mean x bar. That would be the average, and most people tend to be around average. Um, we're talking about heights of girls again in our last example. Most, most girls would be around an average height, and so our greatest number of students would be right around the average here. So here's what they found. If we were to take, let's just say the mean height was 150 centimeters, and let's just say that the standard deviation was four centimeters. Then here's what they find. If you were to go up one standard deviation, so if our mean here was 150, if we add the standard deviation, that's 154 centimeters now, because remember the standard deviation in our example here was 154. And if we go down one standard deviation, oops, put the bar on the wrong thing here. So this would be 150 minus the standard deviation, so this would be down to 146 centimeters. So that would be, let me just get a different pen here. Sixty-eight, here's the thing, sixty-eight percent of the people will be within one standard deviation of the mean. So in other words, if we're looking at this example, 68% of the students in grade 11, the girls in grade 11, would be between 146 centimeters and 154 centimeters. So 68% lies within one standard deviation of the mean. So now you're starting to see where the significance of the standard deviation comes in. When we have data that's normally distributed, 68% will be within four centimeters of the mean. If we go up to two standard deviations, so now we're gonna take the mean and we're gonna add two standard deviations. So that would be plus four plus another four. Now we're at 158 centimeters. And if we go down another standard deviation from the mean, so now we're at the mean, take away two standard deviations, so minus four minus another four, so now we're at 142 centimeters. Now we will have captured, let's go green here on this. Now we will have captured 95% of our people. So in other words, if we go back to this school example, 95% of grade 11 girls would have heights between 142 centimeters and 158 centimeters. And finally, if we go one more standard deviation, if we go up here to the mean plus three standard deviation, so that would take us to 162 centimeters when we add another four. And if we go down here, another standard deviation, so now we're at 138 centimeters. Now, now we would capture 99.7% of the information. So basic, almost 100%. Almost 100% of the girls in grade 11 would have heights between 138 centimeters and 162 centimeters. So these are some really important properties about the normal distribution. The curve looks like this. It's a bell-shaped curve. It's centered right on the average, the mean. So the mean is, is occurs right at the high point of the graph. 68% of your data, of your whatever, students in this example, 68% of the information is going to occur within one standard deviation of your mean. 95% of your information will come within two standard deviations of your mean and 99.7% of your information is gonna come within three standard deviations of your mean. So this is a really important property of the normal distribution. Now let's see how we can use that.
information to deal with some problems. Okay, let's consider this example here. The salaries of a large company, we're told, are normally distributed, so it looks like a bell shape, uh, with a mean of 75000 that's the average salary, and a standard deviation of 10000 So it wants us to sketch a normal curve for this data. All right. So let's do that. So then it says it's normally distributed, so I'm going to draw a nice little bell shape curve here. Something like that. And it says the mean is 75,000, so right in the middle here is $75,000. And the standard deviation it says is $10,000. I'm just going to move this up a bit. So that means here would be 85,000. That's one standard deviation above the mean, and this would be one standard deviation below the mean, so 65,000. And then if we go up another standard deviation, so 65, 85, 95,000, down another standard deviation to 55,000. Remember, our standard deviation is 10,000, so plus 10,000 would be one standard deviation, plus another 10,000 up to here. And if we did one more, this would now be 105,000, and down one more would be 45,000. So here's what we know. We know that 68% would be in here, 95 from here to here, and 99.7 within three standard deviations. So there's our, there's our little sketch, and here's the mean right down the middle. So the question says, so we've done that, sketch our, sketch our curve. So this would actually be, let's put some information on here. This would be uh, money or salaries in dollars. And up here would be number of people. So what percent of people would make less than 75,000? So we're gonna use the fact that we know that 68% are within one standard deviation 95 within two standard deviations and 99.7 within three. So what percent of people would make less than 75,000? Well, 75,000 is our mean. So this question wants us to find out how many people would be less than that. Well, since the mean is the middle, the amount of people that would make, what the percent of people that would be making less than 75,000 would simply be 50%. That's half of the people because 75,000 is the mean. What percent of people would make between 65,000 and 85,000? So here's 65,000. Let's get a green pen here. So here's 65,000 right here. Here's the 85,000. So this represents 68% of the people because that's exactly within one standard deviation of the mean. So 68% of the people in this company are going to make between 65000 and 85000 Now the next one gets a bit trickier. What percent of people would make less than 65000 So now we want to know Oh, all right. There we go, got her fixed again. What percent of people would make less than 65,000? So now we wanna know what would all of this area be? Well, here's where we gotta be, kind of break this up into little pieces. Here's what I know. I know that all of this area, instead of figuring out what this is, this is, and this is, it might be easier to figure out what the area to the right is. So we know the area from the mean to the right is 50%. So 50% of the people are making more than 75,000. So then what would this little segment here be? We know if this is 68% all the way across here, then this little part must be 34%. Because this graph is symmetrical, what you see on the left is exactly the same as what you see on the right. So if this width is 
that means this little bit over here is 34 percent. So if this is 34 percent here and everything to the right of the mean is 50 percent, this part in here that's white would be 50 plus 34 which is 84 percent. So if 84 percent is this area, then the area to the left must be 16 percent because obviously everything under this curve represents 100 percent of the people. So what percent of people would make, make less than 65,000? 16 percent because this little part is 34, from here to the end is 50, 50 and 34 make 84, 100 minus 84 would be 16 percent. So this little part over here would represent 16 percent. All right, let's do this next one. What percent of people would make more than 55,000? So here's this part right here. I want to know what percent are making more than 55,000. 55,000 was the mean minus two standard deviations. So, well, here again, I know that this part here from the mean to the right is 50. So I'm going to have 50% is all this part. This little piece in here was 34, so we have to include that too. So the question is, is how much is this little piece? Well, we know that from here to here, with within stu two standard deviations, remember it was 95%. So let's figure out, try to figure out what this little part is here. Um, we know that 95 includes these middle two parts here, which is 68. So let's go 95 and take out the 68. That would leave 27. So 68% was from here to here. That means the remaining 27 comes from these two. If we take 27 and divide it by 2, that would be 13 and a half. So that means each one of these things is 13 and a half. Because 13 and a half plus 13 and a half plus 34 plus 34 gives us our total of 95. So now we found out what these little guys are. So this is all right. Now we can simply add up all these parts. So f all this area to the right is 50, there's an additional 34, and then there's an additional 13.5. So what is that? That's 84 plus 13.5. So 97.5% of the people are making more than $55,000 in this company. And now we've got already quite a bit of information on our graph. Oh, let's put this in here. So to answer the last question, what percent of people would make between 55,000 and 85,000? So that would be from here to here. So now we're looking at this area. So we could just add these pieces up. So 13.5 plus 34 plus 34 would take us from 55,000 to 85,000. So that's 68 plus another 13.5 is 81.5%. So 81.5% of people would make between 55,000 and 85,000.